Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Coolers WP Blab, episode number 400. No, not 400. Oh my gosh, 143. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like 400 because we're streaming at 9 a.m. Pacific exactly. time. Exactly. The topic today is should you should um, should you brand your company or your name? And uh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. I'm 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 excited about this one because it. Uh, it, it relates to what both Bridget and I do. So we're going to get into that in just a second here. Um, WP Blob is made uh, possible by our sponsors, ServerPress and Vendor Fuel. Um, ServerPress makers desktop server. They make local development easy. Check them out over at serverpress.com. They also have another thing called WP Site Sync. Feel free to go take a look at that. It allows you to kind of get all of your data um, synced over between sites. It could be a site that you're moving. It could be a site that you have running locally on, on desktop server and you want to push it over to them. So feel free to go take a look at that over at serverpress.com. Also, I want to let you know that um, this show is not just a podcast or not just a, a video show, or if it's a podcast, we listen to it as a podcast, but um, it's also a video show and a podcast. So if you want to come take a look at us over there, um, go find wherever it is that a great podcast could be downloaded because we're one of those great podcasts. <laughs> So yes, feel free to go take a look at that and uh, download us there. Um, if you want to, if you want to see what's going on and kind of see all the visuals and see all the stuff and see Bridget and I talking and everything, um, you can do that as well by going over to YouTube or um, you can watch us on Facebook. We also stream this on something called Twitter. Twitter, Bridget. Do you know anything about Twitter? I don't know. Tongue in cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, we we stream over Twitter as well. So go take a look at that. Bridget, tell us about yourself. Hey, y'all. Um, this podcast is not sponsored by Nerdist yet or acquired by any other giant corporation. So among being your lovely co-host and uh, marketing expert slash comic hey, con one of us has person, to. <laughs> right? Uh, I also do marketing, social media, copywriting, and editing for WordPress products and businesses, and one Magento guy. Hi, Foomin. You can find out more at BridgetWillard.com. And I just learned how to uh, change my fonts and upload a custom font um, on my website using Astro uh -oh. and You're a little... changing the fonts right now, Bridget. What do you do? I doing? know. What the heck? I was like, wait, these aren't my brand fonts. <laughs> what did I do? Why aren't I not using them? Oh, it's not a Google font. Oh, how do I upload this font? <laughs> There's a WordPress plugin for that, and it's not a joke. Exactly. I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me over at Jason Tucker on Twitter. My website is jasontucker.blog. Um, I do this show as well as another show called WP Water Cooler. And um, today we're going to be talking about maintenance. So if you're around at 11 o'clock Pacific, feel free to go take a look at that. We're going to be streaming that live just like we do here. So wherever it is you're watching us right now, you can watch us there as well. Is it still an Ariana Grande thing? No, we're not doing oh, that today. Oh, man, you got to do it. Okay, we got to at least switch it to Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. Why you shouldn't be cowboy coding. <laughs> <laughs> You're toxic. Oh Why malware is bad for everyone. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the, this show's going to be fun, Bridget, because uh, th this is a little bit of an aside, but um, one of my dogs is in my room, so th this will be fun. We'll see if she freaks out or not. If she does, maybe hitting mute, and I may be running off for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but she was hiding up in the window over there, and uh, I had no idea she's there. <laughs> So she is trapped, and you are also trapped with us. And thank you for joining us when we talk about this existential question. We, you always thought the real question was, did the chicken come first or the egg? Well, <laughs> it's the same in marketing. You you break out into freelancing, or in, as Californians call it, independent contractors, mm -hmm. <laughs> because of AV whatever five. five. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're not sure should i form an llc which exempts you from all of that nonsense right. and a lot of other benefits or should you be yourself and so that's why this conversation is completely relevant all over again as it yeah. is with anybody um when i started freelancing I was like, okay, well, my website's BridgetWiller.com. You find out more about BridgetWiller.com <laughs> and da 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 da, whatever, BridgetWiller.com, something else, whatever, BridgetWiller.com. Like, I just start saying, and then I really don't like my first name and I never have. And this is, okay, so, but like, 
so I'm binging on Anne of Green, um, whatever it's called, Anne with an E yeah. on Netflix. Oh, okay. Which I tweeted about that. Y'all, if you want something to get retweeted, like by a little Twitter army that's not a bot, just say something, 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 and Anne with an E in quotes, and you'll mm -hmm. get tons of reach. <laughs> like I got retweeted on stuff. I was just like, I was gonna go this movie night, but I really just want to eat pizza and binge on in bed and binge on Anne with an E. And then everybody, I like, apparently it's not getting renewed, and people are really upset about it. So oh, that, no. That's your inside Twitter tip for today. So, but the thing is, it Anna Green Cables, I watched that when I was a child, and she was an orphan. And I always, even though I had a mom, I mean, I have a mom, I always related to her for some reason. It was why I actually wanted to be a teacher. I know, yeah. dorking out. I didn't read the books. I'm not a reader, but I I saw the shows on PBS, right? And she was like, oh, I wish my name was something beautiful like Cordelia, right? Because it's just Anne. It's just plain Anne, and, and, but it has an E on the end because everybody's always misspelling it, right? And here's here's me, Bridget. Nobody knows a Bridget um, except, ironically, there was a girl across the street's name is Bridget. And so then I'm like, uh. and then after my husband died, I'm like, well, I don't want to go to my maiden name because I didn't like my dad. I'm not going to offend my grandmother whether she's still alive is 100 and not go to McCann. But I definitely don't want to be Willard anymore. I mean, I'm not a Willard that that's right. not me. So like a lot of times when people get divorced or they're widowed, they go back to a name. So then I was like, I should just totally do my a new name. But here's the problem. And this is uniquely a female problem with marriages and divorces. I am my brand because that was the decision I made. BridgetWillard.com, BridgetWillard.com, right? And so the thing is, I was thinking, well, maybe I should start an LLC. And what would I name it? Mm -hmm. Right? So then I thought I'll name it after my dragon tattoo because I have the dragon and the name of the dragon is sabrina rochelle so i was like i mean i named my dragon whatever i'm sure. weird okay so that was like sabrina do? rochelle marketing uh-huh and then i'm just the founder or some, right. something like that or the ceo and then i was like find out more well, hi my name is bridget or <laughs> my name is elizabeth or whatever or Yelena or whatever i decided to change and i'm with sabrina rochelle marketing why is my name not sabrina like where's sabrina right. coming from? what's the backstory on that uh -huh. and, and for what reason except for it's like so now i fragment it even more changed my name changed my business name and yep. everybody knows me because for 20 since 1993 i've been bridget mm -hmm. willard since 1993 right. yeah yeah okay so the thing is, and then people were like, well, actors have stage names. So this is the this is the reason why it's so important to think about this in a long term. Because I right. could have just said, look, I want my name to be Elizabeth, which is the name I always wish it, my name was. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just um, name myself Elizabeth, you know, um, Larson. Because I was thinking about going with one of my friend's parents. Yeah. And that, then I'll name myself Elizabeth Larson. And then everybody has to call me. I mean, transgender people do it all the time, but it's yeah. a big giant branding problem. And that's the a huge that's, change, right? Yeah. Especially if you already chose to be a public person. And that's why this right. is such a great conversation. Yeah. So do you want people to know you as a person or do you want people to know your work? Right. So right. WP water cooler is bigger than Jason Tucker. Yep. Yep. And that was the decision that you made because because you you prefer to be private and even more so because you have children. So when you have right. children, that's even it's a, that's a more intense conversation. And sometimes people who have children with uh, disabilities or abilities or medical problems, they they do the same thing. Like my stepdaughter could have marched with the cystic fibrosis people, but her son who had it preferred to be private so right. the fundraising became difficult yeah so with every with every choice there's a pro and a con and so that's kind and there's of the also story of and there's also choices. domain names there's domain names there's twitter handles there's all of those sorts of things that are um you know 
those but are things true, that we're kind of stuck with. Yeah. Because because originally BridgetWillard.com was a porn site. Oh wow, really? Yeah, I couldn't get that domain. Man. So when I signed up for um, but before I signed up on WordPress.com, I just did you two can be a guru, which I never use anymore. I used to do my jingle. Remember, you two can be a guru, you know. And so there goes Twinkie or Twinkle. <laughs> I always call her Twinkie. I don't know. Is it Twinkie or Twinkle? Twinkle. Twinkle. So Twinkle, twinkle little dog. <laughs> oh, how cute. But that's the thing, right? So so then I was like, well, you two can be a guru because that was what I call my Twitter account, which it still is. Right. But the thing is that that is why I had to make that decision. And even making that decision was a longer name than Twitter currently and previously accepts. They only let you have 15 characters for the handle, for the handle. So I can't be you two can be a guru. It's you two can be guru. Mm -hmm. yep, and yep. even yesterday, I went. So I did it the wrong way, you guys. That's why I'm. That's why I'm telling you this, not to talk about myself so much. But I did it wrong. I didn't have an iPhone when Instagram came out. I had an Android, so I couldn't mm. get any of my usernames. So I'm Bridget M Willard on Instagram. It's not what I wanted. I wanted to be you two yeah. can be a guru. But it was That's gone. I was on Facebook. Facebook Gigi had was the same gone, problem. Right? And so then I'm already Bridget Willard on Facebook. So my page, I went to it yesterday and I was like, I don't ever say you two can be a guru anymore. That's not even my business. On Google on Google Maps and Google listings, it's BridgetWillard.com. Right? Well, I'm, yeah. So then mm -hmm. I went to go change my little handle and it mm -hmm. said against their guidelines. Oh, boy. Right? So... This is why when we say like really think about it, we mean think about it for more than five minutes and start doing some research about what domain names and stuff are available too. So it's not just whether you want to be public or private or use your name or not use your name. It's also like what's available. Yeah. And you know, it's like when you're setting up a business, for instance, and you go over to the you go over to the uh, the courthouse or wherever it is that you're able to do it, the registrar, and you say, "All right, I want to start my business," and they go, "Okay, well, what's the name of the business?" You essentially have two choices. You have you have a DBA that you can run off of. I mean, you can do a corporation, do all the other fun stuff, but let's just say super basic. Um, you could do a DBA, which means you are doing business as, and then whatever it is that you're going to be doing. And then they have to go um, use something called a newspaper and then they put your name in the newspaper and then people who read newspapers will figure out whether or not that, that name is something. So it's, you know, what have Fictitious you. Fictitious name filing. Yeah, it's a whole dumb thing. So you have that. Um, or you could just, for free, because you're not changing anything, you could just be your own name. Ta-da! You're your own name. You're good. I already and have a social security number. Look how easy that is. <laughs> Let's just tie everything together. Whatever. <laughs> So yeah, so you end up doing that, that sort of thing. And um, you come to find out that, you know, either your name's complicated, so it's hard to, to, to spell the name, that your name is ultra generic, you know, your name is, you know, whatever, something, so, something ultra generic. You go and do a domain name search, you find out, my name's not available. John Doe. Yeah, your name's John Doe, and you have to be John Doe dot limousine or something like that as your domain name, because there's <laughs> hopefully he's driving a limousine. But it's like you know, like those you are do the not want a John Doe as your driver. That's a branding problem. <laughs> That's a branding problem. <laughs> oh, your man. DOA with John Doe limousine. Remember, call John Doe limousine at one eight eight six five four DOA with John Doe limousine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'll be your partner. Right. So you have those sorts of things that that happen. So you gotta, I don't know, you gotta look into those and kind of figure out what's available and kind of getting all those uh, together. There used to be a couple websites, and I used to recommend them um, way back in the day. That you just type in a name and hit search, and it would go and try to hit every single social media account to figure out if those accounts were available or not using that name. They don't work all that well anymore because a lot of them are returning back, you know, kind of false positive things or false negative things. And so it was just, it was just, it just doesn't work out. So really you need to kind of do your research, figure out if those things are available. Um, 
you know, on Twitter, for instance, you can make multiple Twitter accounts. It's okay. Feel, feel free to. Um, it, it, the whole the whole system screwed up anyhow. So yeah, you might as well put some stuff in there. But find all those things and try to be consistent. I wonder if Legal Zoom has that now because when I went to originally, when I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to be Sabrina Rochelle," is it available? Right. You're like, "Yeah, that works. It does not take in." I don't know. Maybe well, it's a California it's kind of like, thing. I look at it. I mean, yeah, and this is very a very California thing. Um, is that uh, if you, for instance, if you go and you're wanting to become an actor or an actress and you want to have your actor or actress name. Um, you'd want to, you'd end up going to like the screen actors guild to go and register your name. And those people's names need to be unique enough that there's no kind of crossover. So you have like, um, for instance, you have Michael Jordan, who's a, a you know, he, he plays basketball, but then you also have another guy, Michael B. Jordan that wants to have use his name as well. And he had to add the B in there in order to make it so that, you know, SAG would allow him to register his name. So, um, you know, these things happen with all, you know, for instance, if you're a clown and you want to register your clown face, you have to do the same thing. They all need to be unique and they all need to have all that stuff. So there's just, there, there's those types of things you want to look at. So if you're wanting to find like, what's the best way to kind of navigate that, look up stage names and kind of see how stage names work and see if that's something that um, would help you out and kind of determining how your name should be set up and, and, and all of that. Exactly. Um, a lot of those people are required to to also trademark their name. So, um, you know, if you're using something that's ultra unique and you want to make sure that you're the only one using it, trademarking, trademarking that name would be a, a good idea as well. So there's just there's a lot of those sorts of things you should look into when you're kind of setting this stuff up. But I guess, you know, you brought up earlier, Bridget, was the fact that um, that I'm a private person. I'm not all that private. It's just I I kind of got I kind of fell into privacy where privacy was forced upon me because of various things that were happening on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook and all that fun stuff. So um, well, what I mean my... is you're very good at keeping the line. Yeah, I know that you had that actual issue. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I mean you're not saying, oh my god, my wife made bologna sandwiches for dinner. She sucks balls. You know, oh yeah, no way. Like yeah. you're not talking about you're you're talking about oh I did this, we're letterboxing. Um, right. here I am at the here's the sunset, I work at a church, look at all these yep. wires, I'm an IT guy, whatever. Yep. But you're you're not me. Oh no, I'm not I am not taking pictures of all my bologna sandwiches and, and comparing them and doing any of that sort of thing. <laughs> right. And and so there's a there's a there is that line, and I think that you yeah. do it very well. Because that is the other question. If you are on social media, if you are a public person, mm -hmm. does that mean I can't I can't have a private life? And the answer is yes and no. Right. Because like you told me when I first started doing this podcast with you, you said, Bridget, people are going to walk up to you and say hi, and they're going to know you, but you're not going to know them. And you're going to feel yep. really weird because you're going to feel like you met them, right. but you never did. Because they're the lurkers. Because there's always mm -hmm. that population of people who never respond to stuff, okay? But they read it, and they consume it, and they listen. And that's yeah. the same way with my Twitter. So after, so I've always, I went to Twitter because I felt like I could vent and talk about things that I couldn't say without anybody interrupting me and being a pain, right? So right. I, when I started YouTube Can Be Guru, it was mostly in... Uh, tongue in cheek, like sarcastic, witty, making fun of people, like stop doing follow Friday, stop tagging yourself, stop, like don't wear those pants with that shirt, that kind of like aggressive, unsolicited advice. But then after my husband died, I was just like, well, this is going on and this is going on and this is going on and this is going on. And I had a lot of people say to me, Stop talking about your life on the internet. Stop talking about your life on the internet. Stop talking hmm. about your life on the internet. And I actually had a really funny joke that our producer, Jen, made me delete off of Facebook, but I kept it on Twitter, which was, I don't mind dating a guy who's younger than me, but he has to be able to grow a beard better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but that, that, it's that, funny, that right? But she goes, you, Bridget, Bridget, we're trying to get you dates. Stop telling people you have a beard. I'm like, not only do I have a beard, it's great. Okay. So just like, this is life. So to me, I'd rather be funny and also open. And the risk is that people will know things about you that they can use in their arsenal. But, right. but the reward is people feel very connected to me which means my DMs are full of very intimate conversations. And I don't mean um, sexual, I mean emotionally intimate conversations right. where they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going, I'm going through. through that too. I yeah. have this happening, yeah. And so guess what? Has that been bad for my business? Uh, nope, it nope. just means that you're a human. <laughs> No, uh, because a lot of people said you shouldn't say this. Now, I don't client, client shame or anything like that. I just talk about right. people who don't know how to spell and texting. And why isn't their <laughs> autocorrect fixing that when my autocorrect won't even let me say what I want to? Because when you use the word four or use the number four for the word four, it's still correct. It's just wrong. <laughs> but what are you doing with the extra time you save by not typing those two <laughs> characters? When you misspell the word Fred. <laughs> F R T. You know what? Whatever. And, and and then like so, it's so funny that I that I'll say it, and then people go, "Oh my gosh, I feel so connected to you," and subconsciously they're going like, "Oh yeah, I really want your help." Now I don't do that with my I don't do it on my client accounts, and right. you know, and they and some and usually I keep Sarah from doing it on her account. <laughs> like Sarah, don't do that at Co Braid Media. That's why you have your <laughs> own handle. <laughs> So like it, there's that, right? So when you do have a brand, you you have a responsibility to maintain that voice because it's bigger than yourself. Correct. So that if you are going to do that, if you are going to be w WP Water Cooler, if you are going to be Code Brain Media, if you are going to be WordPress, mm -hmm. then you have a higher responsibility in my in my view to be as kind and personable as possible. Right. Because when a brand starts talking about politics, you uh, have yeah. people outside of Chick-fil-A right. or Susan J. Komen, just to get both sides over here, or, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Saying things. You know, and they're they're very offended that these companies have opinions that sure, are expressed sure. on behalf of the brand, right? So, if if you are going to be that kind of person who is super passionate about your belief system or your personality, it's going to make it very difficult for the brand, the companies brand, not your personal mm -hmm. brand, to have a voice that is sustainable when it's no longer possible for you to manage that as one person. Meaning when yeah. you, when your business inevitably scales, because this is the reason why you, you're making some brand company brand, you, you're going to need somebody else to help you with that marketing, whether it's a partner or a, vendor but it's not going to be john doe doing his own tweeting he's driving mm -hmm. right so somebody else has to do that so they have to do all their graveyard jokes and keep it all the same and have a brand guideline and so either way it becomes a complicated thing yeah that that handoff <clears throat> is not easy and and being able to get people to sp i mean we have you know like you're saying our producer um uh Jen she 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 does that like that's her ability is to take that that voice and run with it even though she's not that person but she can find that voice and then use it and then start going with it so yeah and i guess at some point like you even have like you even have like brands for instance that sound like somebody's name so Kate Spade for instance like you know at, at some point Kate no longer works for the company. She doesn't work for the company anymore. Well, and, and people suicide. and people run and people <laughs> run Kate Sprade now, you know? Cuz the brand is bigger than the person. And that's what yes. I was going to say. When I was when I was taking a shower, I was like, this is one thing that drives me crazy about WordPress 
is that we all just talk to each other in our little post status slacks or whatever we're on. Right. Okay. And we're, we're only getting, we're only getting advice and, and, uh, counsel from people who are, it's just, yeah. a it's like a incest. Yeah. It's thought incest is what I call it. Jason can yeah. used to try get so mad at me for calling it that, but that's what it is because you're just with a bunch of yes men and we're all just doing the same thing, but we're not innovating because we're not looking outside and all innovation comes from looking outside other disciplines. It's always been that way. Um, spend seven minutes and listen to Stephen B. Johnson's where good ideas come from Ted talk anyway. So, but Calvin Klein is Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren is Ralph Lauren and it's polo by Ralph Lauren and it's chaps by Ralph Lauren and it's right. Lauren by La Ralph Lauren. It's okay. So he is still a person, but the company is named after him mm -hmm. just like, uh, Ferrari is named after Enzo Ferrari. It's a racing right. company and they wanted to just build race cars. And so they built custom cars for people to sell to fund their racing. Or like in our more closer to our life, time span wise, is Gary Vaynerchuk, who mm -hmm. came from Russia. And his name mm -hmm. is very hard to spell unless you've typed it a hundred times like I have. And so what's his Twitter handle? Gary V. V E E. Yeah. And then he took the first part of his name, Vayner, and then started a company called Vayner Media. Right? So you yeah. have Richard Branson, the person, and you have mm -hmm. Virgin Records, and then you have Virgin Airlines, and you have Virgin, Virgin Atlantic. <laughs> right? And yeah. they're all different things. But so it, so you can do something like what Gary V does. Yeah. His name is Gary Vaynerchuk, mm -hmm. but he goes by Gary V mm -hmm. and it's Vayner media that he started with his brother, whose name is also Vaynerchuk. Right? right. So you can do that too, but still you, even if you do, even if you do have a company, even if you do have WP watercolor, this network of podcasts, you're still Jason Tucker. And right. to some degree you have to be online. So yeah. <clears throat> I've kind of hijacked you before, but it's super relevant. And I know we're coming up to our 30 minute mark, but can you please give, because you are a dad, you have three children. Can you please talk to um, our audience about how to be a public person with children and protecting their rights in three minutes? Yeah, hey, I can do that real quick. <laughs> So I, I, I've kind of built in a few things, especially when it comes to Facebook. So I think of Facebook as my mom's looking at Facebook. Like my mom could potentially be watching this right now because I shared this content on my Facebook account and it's also on, on the page as well. Um, but what, 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 <laughs> so what I, what I use with that is um, I, I kind of have this strict discipline of going into my um in my privacy settings and telling it all of my old content every month I do this, all my old content, turn it into friends only. And so regardless if I posted something publicly, everything I post is always friends only unless I'm doing something for water cooler. If I'm doing something for WP water cooler network, that stuff gets posted publicly. And then I'll just uh, flip the bit at the end of the month and say, okay, all my old content, all private. So if I accidentally share something that's, or I intentionally share something that um, I want people to see that's outside of my network, outside of my friends, um, I, I would use that as my way of doing this. Um, for instance, on Twitter, I don't post any pictures of my kids or anything like that. I just post pictures of myself or stuff that I'm doing. Um, and um, that just comes from you know being scammed a few times and have people using my content for other things and stuff. And then my Instagram account is um, private. It's a private Instagram, but it's a large private Instagram where I'm I'm following people that you know celebrities that I'm interested in or things that's going on or brands that I'm interested in, and um, a lot of WordPress folks as well as um, church folks and uh, all the different networks I'm kind of involved in. I kind of do that, and so. Um, on there, on that Instagram account, I am posting pictures of my kids. I am posting pictures of things that's happening in my with my family and and that sort of stuff. Um, but to kind of to to kind of uh, make sure that I'm not um, kind of messing with their privacy, I, I I'm still you know very careful as to 
what things I'm posting and what things show up in that feed. Um, I don't go so far as to like, for instance, people know I live in Whittier, California. That, that's just, I gave that up. That's what it is. Um, there's only so many high schools that are in Whittier, California. And um, my daughter goes to one of those high schools. Oh, oh my gosh, my kid goes to school. Um, but because of that, <laughs> um, her name of her school shows up on various items that get posted. Um, she's a water polo player, player and all that stuff. There's all these other things. So it's like you have to just be careful with how you're kind of managing that stuff. But I will say that if you haven't done what I'm doing with Facebook, um, definitely go through and look at, especially if you can go on there and click on the thing that lets you look at it as from the public side and figure out what's actually happening there. And is that something that you want to continue to do or not? But I always make my stuff, you know, not private, but just for my friends only. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of brands who will tell me I manage their account or whatever, and <clears throat> they don't want to talk about that their wife had a baby or what mm. the, or what happened or whatever. And they right. they don't talk about their family life at all. Yeah. So I always say, if you can give up something of yourself, because uh that's what people are gonna remember you by, and that's what people are going to um Ha have as a as a kind of a la 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 launching point mm -hmm. <clears throat> to start conversation with you we call it small talk but it's just entry level talk it's not really small so like when i go to hennessy's i'll you know two or three times a week i also see dan the golf pro he's not a golf pro anymore he i mean he's <laughs> he's really good at golf but he manages golf courses but he said oh yeah i'm dan i'm a golf pro i manage this golf course i don't even remember what it is okay but right. i remember dan the golf pro uh -huh. and i go hey dan the golf pro and he's like bridget oh my god and they're like oh you colored your hair we're gonna call you scarlet Blah, whatever <laughs> but that's what i remember right and right. so you he, so I have things to talk to him about, like, how's work? How's it going? You know, da, 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 whatever. And then he'll tell me more like he's dating a girl. He's a cute little kid. I mean, it's a little, he's not, I'm not interested in it, but he's a friend. And right. I'm like, oh, how's that going? Oh, she's too young. She's only 22. She's still like, and I'm like, yeah, your brain's not done until you're 25. Blah, 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 blah. Right. But you have, you have, so that's what happens in real life. So mm -hmm. online, you have to give them something to talk to you about. That's when right. having a Twitter bio, if you don't want to post all the time that you're really sad that what insert team name here lost, insert championship mm -hmm. here, then you could you you know, you should say. And uh not everybody's gonna ask because I'm not I've tried to be more curious about people, but I respect their privacy too. My philosophy in person and online is that if somebody wants to tell me something, they'll tell it to me. But if you don't have something for me to grab onto conversationally, mm -hmm. then we're not gonna have a relationship, you know? And, right. and I I don't I I hate that the word relationship is just thrown into the confines of romantic relationships because every there's relationship is just two people talking and having some kind of bond it doesn't have to be a romantic bond right so right. we have business relationships we have friendships we have peers we have colleagues we have acquaintances like dan the golf pro i, I don't even know his last name or where he works i just know he's there i'm there hi how are you it's good to see you here's a hug we're humans we both live in dana point and a story so there's <laughs> something to talk about right but when you find out something about somebody else that you have in common, there's a magic that happens. And there's this really great C.S. Lewis quote that I wish I had memorized. It says, friendship is when you say to the other person, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that was happened to you, too. Or I didn't know that you liked that, too. And that's why these camaraderies with people who are sports ball fans are so strong. Yeah. Or people who go to comic-con or people who are mad that the doctor and who the who the doctor, doctor who, who the who <laughs> oh my god uh, doctor and doctor who is a female now because the big debate on twitter was is the doctor really a gender the doctor is a a role not a right. person right so like if I were a Doctor Who nerd, that's what I would have used as an analogy for this. Because is it about that specific doctor that was in that time? 
Is it Dr. One, two, three? It's like James Bond, right? James Bond, that changed a lot. But I, that, I know that better, right? But 007 is bigger than Sean Connery, Roger Moore, et cetera. It's bigger than the actor. But in the, but in, but sometimes we, we think that, you know, there's just nothing to talk to. So I don't know about Doctor Who, so I can't comment on your new bow tie. I'm like, I see that you've got a new bow tie, and I'm really excited that you've got a new bow tie. That's Tracy App's got a new bow tie. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know what to say because I don't know about it, right? But, but I mean, she is giving something. So the Whoville who's are going to be really Whoville. That's from Grinchy Stoker. (laughs) The people who really like Doctor Who are going to have something to say, right? And that's, that's giving of herself. We know that she likes to wear bow ties, you know? And, and I have a friend on Instagram. That's all he posts is his ties. This is the Hmm. tie of the day, like outfit of the day, but tie of the day. Right. So you have something of yourself. It doesn't have to be, oh my God, my mom is so blah, 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 and I hate my life and this guy is a jerk. And what do you do when people don't call you back? You don't have to be me. I always say you don't have to be me. But I have allowed several points of contact, hubs of conversation mm-hmm. to exist because mm-hmm. people could talk to me about dogs uh, the fact that I just now discovered Radiohead in 2020. I mean, I knew Karma Police, but I, I downloaded the <laughs> OK Computer. And right. I'm in love with this album. And I would just sit in the bath and listen to this album. And now people know I took a bath and listen to Radiohead. And then they could say something to me about it. Like, well, that's not even the best album. And why aren't you listening to it on vinyl, you weirdo? Or whatever. Yep. But that's the thing about being a person online is whatever it is, it doesn't have to be. Uh, there's people I never knew they were married. I never right. knew they had kids and still they start DMing me. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't talk about it and it's totally fine to do uh-huh. that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Anyway, I, I, it was a, kind of a mini rant, but like I look no. at these accounts yeah. so much and I'm like, and people are like, well, why aren't people connecting with me? What are you telling about yourself? We have a question. I love questions. Check it out. What about doing business on your Facebook profile page? Don't they frown on that? Okay, doing business. So that phrase, thanks for that question, Chip. That phrase is is weird. Okay, so we don't do a transaction. Hey, would you like this pen? Okay, buy it. Send me the money. I'll put it in the mail. You could do that, okay? But we're not transactional in that way on Facebook. What we are is transactional with relationships, which is why I call it relationship marketing. So be an approachable human, right? Have a Facebook page so that you have insights, so that you can hire somebody to manage it, so that you can advertise. And then every once in a while, and I mean like once a month, mm-hmm. maybe share something from your Facebook page to your business profile. Sometimes I take a picture of myself at my desk and I check in at you two can be a guru. And then people know that I'm at my business. So that's right. a way of telling, reminding people that I do it for example, but, the, but you can also be a soft sell. For example, I was like, I want to, I want to volunteer at the animal shelter, but they want a six month commitment. So I might as well just sign up on rover.com and get paid for that. Right. This is a real, this is actual story. So then my friend DMS me and goes, I need a dog sitter next weekend. How much do you charge? I'm like $50 a night. You want to come meet the dog? Yeah. I'm at the dog. Oh, look, now I'm posting pictures of me and the dog. People like, did you get a dog? No, I didn't get a dog. Hashtag dog sitting. It says hashtag dog sitting, like I'm dog sitting. And then somebody else goes, I saw that on Facebook that you're dog sitting. I have these five dates. Can you do this? And I'm like, okay. Bridget, this happens to me too. I I go and I go and run a couple cables at work. And then every guy goes, you're a network engineer. Wow. You run cable. Can I hire you to do cable? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I already have a job. I'm good. I'm not, no, this is, this is not the type of work that I normally do. But right. This is the type of work that I have to do. But if I had always, but if I only post or I post too much, like bridgetwiller.com slash dog sitting, bridgetwiller.com slash dog sitting. Do you have a dog? Do you have a cat? 
Do you have a pet? Do you have a lizard? Do you have a tortoise? I'll help you with your dogs. <laughs> I'll help you with your cats. I know how to do medicine. I know how to do leash walking. <laughs> da, 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 da. See, uh -huh. see this landing page. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Look at me. Look at me. Bye, 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 bye. Like, no, those, that doesn't work. People right. don't care. But, but, but because I never said I was, uh -huh. and then people saw that I was, what do you have? scarcity which is what we yeah. started this episode talking about yeah yeah no i i don't know i to kind of answer chip's question in in that is that like for instance i post my own i post this stuff i mean i'm posting this right now on my personal my personal account um but i'm also you know posting things that are that are wordpress related on wp water cooler if i go to a word camp I start posting some stuff in there. Here's some photos. Here's some this and that. Um, because sometimes people are only looking at one avenue of where you're posting this stuff. For instance, we're streaming this live right now on our WP Water account on the YouTube he Can Be a Guru um, uh, page, on um, the uh, WP Water Cooler Facebook account, on my Twitter account. I mean, at some point, we should probably be posting this on your Twitter account. Like, there's all these different things that you can do. And you just need to be where the people are. And sometimes the people are friends with you, but they don't realize that you run a business. So if you're if you're a cement mixer and you never talk about cement mixing on your personal stuff, and you have a friend who is looking for a cement mixer, they are never going to know that you're a cement mixer. Right. So that's never the other well, extreme. Like, if you have a photo of you sitting there doing your cement mixing, then people go like, oh, he does cement mixing. That's great. And then they may hit you up and ask you for you know work or whatever. And that's kind of what Bridget's doing. Bridget's cement mixing is putting words together, putting content together, putting any of those things together to get people to go and like, ah, oh, that's what's happening. I see. And and then they go and hit her up and say, hey, you know, I'm a golf pro and I, I want to... Um, I want to start doing a side business. Can you help me out? And yeah. Mr. Golf Pro might be hitting up Bridget one day saying, hey, can you do this? But he's only going to ask Bridget if Bridget tells him every once in a while, hey, so, you know, man, this social media stuff, are you on Twitter? And then, you know, however, and you just kind of start talking about it a little bit. That's exactly how I hired my one of my favorite bartenders to teach me kickboxing. Because he said that he... Uh, used to fight for Muay Thai and he teaches little kids classes. And I was like, I don't like, want to be I don't want to be with a bunch of little kids. I don't want to be in a class humiliated with a bunch of little kids. Would you do this privately? And he's like, I better ask my coach. <laughs> like if I could teach an adult, I'm like, can't you take money and then show me stuff? Why why you <laughs> he's like, oh I guess it's okay. They were I don't want to join your mailing would... list, bro. I just need to get <laughs> figure out how to kick kick some butt <laughs> right so it's about appropriateness and so but i only knew that jake did that because he talked about it and then he reinforced it by posting on instagram mm -hmm. and uh snapchat which i follow on of course bartenders but uh, on instagram that these classes right you know little vignettes of the kids fighting or sparring i mean in the ring yeah so it's saying it and then sprinkling it, sprinkling mm -hmm. it like salt. You don't yeah. dump salt all over. The little bit that is, if you, but the you know who does it the worst? Hmm. Real estate people. Oh yeah, they always be selling, always be closing. <laughs> there are two people I know that are. There are three people I know that are really good at being personal and not being too salesy. Karen Arigo. Um. And then John Alisi uh -huh. and Kyle Clayton Gore. Mm. You like you see more Kyle's uh, post about cooking in his kitchen and his garden than anything else. Now that's that's another good example. We got to get him on the show. Uh, he's my client. And those are adjacent though. Like those things are adjacent they to what are. he's doing. They are. There's a he kitchen like, in there that he's right? selling, and there's and, a garden potentially that he's selling as well. And he's but he said to me, Well, sorry if I stole I, that from you. No, but no, but no, but that's what he said. Should I talk about this? I'm like, hello, you know, but but did I know that he and his partner were adopting a kid? Right. No, right. No, I didn't yeah. until it happened, and then uh -huh. they were allowed to show the kid. Because right. when you're a foster, you can't have pictures. Yeah, up, yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there, just because you're public doesn't mean mm -hmm. you have to sh 
put your social security number on Twitter. Right. Well, like for instance, um, we had Marcy Masura on the show oh, a while so back good. and she, she loves to bitch and complain about air travel and air travel is the conduit to get her from place to place in order for her to be able to do work. And so her, her work is, is doing, you know, PR stuff and doing marketing and doing all those sorts of things and kind of helping brands do all that stuff. But, but when you're, when, when the only thing she can really complain about or really think she can really talk about is how much Delta sucks this month or how much, you know, whoever sucks this month. And she wants to, she, she just straight up airs it. Um, that's showing you that this person, she's not really talking too much about like the clients that she's working for, but she's, she's showing the fact that she's moving, that things are happening and that there's a momentum that's going on. And I think, I think if you're somebody who runs a business that is, you think is super boring online, you may want to take a look at maybe kind of changing that and, and talking about like how you're getting there, why you're getting there, how's the lunches, all the things that you normally do as a business person, and then kind of jump in from that with right. that Bridget. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about something for our, um, 45 minute mark here? I do want to tell us a little about something. I want to tell you about vendor fuel. This week's tool or tip of the week is brought to you by vendor fuel. Vendor fuel is a next generation shopping cart plugin that will ignite your e-commerce built using angular JS with the Laravel backend. Vendor Fuel lets you keep your customers on your website for the entire checkout experience. Start a 90-day free trial now and ignite your e-commerce at VendorFuel.com. You know, I always wanted to be a DJ. I mean, I know I said I wanted to be a teacher, but yeah. I also, before that, w w WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> We could do that, that but so we rad. couldn't get any of the licensing. So what we'd have to tell people is, hey, we're going to be listening to this song. And then everyone goes and hits play. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, they have those in. silent discos. It's like the DIY. <laughs> okay, right. Everybody stick up. We're going to send you this playlist on Spotify. <laughs> now press play. No, but every three minutes, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to say something. So here we go. It's so funny. I don't listen to Spotify and it's not my tool or tip of the week. I never understood it. But I do uh, subscribe to John, uh, the angry therapist, John Kim. So there's mm. another person who's marketing himself as something else. But uh, he has these text messages. And um, sometimes he sends the whole group a Spotify playlist that he put together for like breakups or something like that. Like yeah. he makes, he makes a mixtape. He's my age. So he calls right. it, here's my Spotify mixtape, whatever. <laughs> so, um, on point with this episode, my tool or tip of the week is brandyourself.com. Brandyourself.com. Oh. It's kind of like, um, it's a little bit like mentions. I, I don't like mention that well. Um, obviously, set up Google alerts for your name, your business name, that kind of stuff. Obviously, I, should, I shouldn't say obviously. In addition to, I'm going to rewrite this. In addition to setting up Google alerts for your name and quotes and your website URL and having that search in Hootsuite so you can see if people are tweeting about your actual uh, website, brandyourself.com will link with your LinkedIn, Facebook, all those profiles. It will alert you when there's a free version, which is the only one I participate in, will alert you when uh, it sees and you know, it finds something on Google and it will say, is this positive? Is this negative? Is this positive? Is this negative? So for example, if some, somebody wrote, oh my gosh, I heard BridgetWillard.com. She was the worst. She makes you pay ahead and she schedules everything and deletes the tweets that you write that are terrible and re repost them. You know, I never want to hire her again. You should never, ever hire her again. She does things the right way. It's so annoying. She gives me homework. It's terrible. She's like a bad <laughs> teacher. Um, and then it, it would show up. It would send me an email and say, here's this link. Is it positive or negative? And if it's negative, then, of course, they want you to sign up for them to remove mm. it or da-da-da-da-da. But you should definitely, when it's, when it's personal brand, your company is an extension of your identity. So whether it's a company or whether it's you as a person, you should definitely sign up for this, at least the free version, and uh, pay attention to what people are talking about you. That's cool. 
is this is this kind of like having a Google alert, but more so? Yeah, because uh, the Google alert will tell you something's there, but this is about reputation management. I mean, I just call it branding, but it's reputation right. management. I've never experienced something where I need them to say no nothing because I work on the philosophy of volume. So even right. if you have negative reviews, it's like the two episodes we had with Chris Badgett and Tevya Washburn about reviews that, you know, even if you have bad reviews, just out volume them. It doesn't matter like, oh, yeah, nobody can own a hashtag. You own it by volume because in this world and especially in the way we advertise in America, it's about eyeballs. You're paying for potential eyeballs. We call those impressions and you can out volume yourself. Essentially, I'm going to I'm going to boil down and piss off everybody who's an SEO consultant, especially technical. But when it comes to SEO, it's really about producing content and producing content is a volume game. You do four posts a week like we did at Give WP that year. Guess mm -hmm. what? All of a sudden you're you look like a huge plug-in. You know, and it helps you grow because that you're the one producing the content. So yeah, but you still need to be able to know when people are talking poorly about you. Right. So yeah. That 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 makes that makes sense. I, I don't know. I I was trying to figure out because like for instance, um like Google Alerts just don't work for me. Like I don't get enough information out of it. Well, people aren't writing and about you. That's the problem. Which is good, yeah, but much, which might be good, but no, I mean, serious. <laughs> like I do this. Yeah. I used to do this for like clients that were running when I was doing politics. Right. That's when it's a problem. You want to know if anybody's talking about AD seventy three, right? Or, U.S. Senate yeah. race or Elizabeth M. Kin, because you have to be on top of it, and so it depends. It depends. Your favorite answer. The, right. It depends. The little <laughs> character guy. But the thing <laughs> is that it's volume. So if you are really out there in the public and you don't yeah. have a PR person, you don't have somebody that you're hiring to pay attention to you, that, you know, you should do that and see what people are saying. And I've done it backwards for, you know, sometimes you just search the domain doing research on clients to see what you know, if they don't have content, somebody's probably talking about them. And if it's a good thing, then let's put that on your website, you know. Right. That's, it helps get, get information, especially like, you know, like we didn't even talk about, um, oh, my gosh, this episode could have been four hours. Keep, <laughs> what's your tool or tip of the week? I'm going to stop talking. All right. So um, <laughs> let's see here. I've had I've had a couple a couple times where um, where people that are looking to start a podcast are trying to find a place to host their podcast. Oh, and I've had I've had um, I've had I don't know the the conversations I've had are from people who um, thought podcasting only started like three years ago or five years ago or something like that when they don't realize that podcasts have been around for many, 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 many years. I've been doing podcasting two years before it's or two years after it started. And I've been doing it for, I think it's like 10 plus years now. Wow. So, so they, they think that podcast just started yesterday or something like that. And whenever like the podcast serial came out and they're like, Oh, this is, this is, this is how podcasting started. And it's like, no, that, that, there may have been like a third resurgence or a fourth resurgence of podcasting, but podcasting has been around for a long time. It hasn't been as long as radio, obviously, but it's been around a long time. And so, you know, the, the kind of the skills and the tools that people are using to, um, to create podcasts and where to host them and um, has changed dramatically over the years. And so a lot of people used to just host their podcasts, like the MP3 file itself, on their own website. And that's a big no-no when you're trying to figure out advertising and uh, analytics and how many people are you know, downloading your shows or any of that sort of thing. And I always suggest to go and host your podcast with a podcast hosting company. And podcast hosting companies are different than a web host because they know how MP3 files are being downloaded and what kind of analytical data they can pull in 
and um, each of these different networks that kind of send your files out if you're listening to to it through um, Spotify versus iHeartRadio versus you know um, Overcast versus the podcasting app on your computer or on your mat or your iPhone, Android, blah blah blah, that whole thing. So they're all different in, in, you know, just like how you shouldn't go and kind of build your, you know, set up your own, um, you know, website that you host on your computer at home and have everyone connect to your computer at home. You host, you get actual web host and you put your stuff there. Um, it, it's different. It's a different type of kind of setup. So um, there's, there's a bunch of different companies out there that do this. There's a company called Blueberry. There's another company um, called um, the one I, we use here is called Acast. Um, used to be it used to be called Pippa at one point. Oh, and and so um, there's um, there's a whole bunch of these different ones that are out there. And so I just wanted to share the one that we use, um, and just because we've been using it for so long now, and so I wanted to kind of you know share that real quick here. So let me uh, let me pull it up here, and uh, we can take a look. So this is um, Acast, and uh, I'm new to Acast as well because I used to use um, I used to use this this thing called Pippa, and so you know what they do is they do all of the hosting for a whole bunch of different huge companies and and stuff like that, and just you know the analytics data, you know the the way of being able to you know look and see you know from all the different uh, podcasting apps how this stuff works, how you're able to kind of download it and listen to it. They have different cool little things that you can do where it'll kind of show you the um, the album art. And then if you don't have a website for your podcast, they'll create one for you. They also have a transcription service if you wanted to use that as well. Um, and some, you know, sharing stuff. And these are all things that are just being added and that are just, at least for my account, I've been using this for, you know, a number of years since we started this show. So um, yeah, go take a look at them. Um, hosting for them, uh, they have a starter package that's for free. They have an influencer one, their ace one, and then if you have like a pro service where you're running like a huge network, um, you can hook up with them and kind of get that set up. Um, the the thing about um, you know when you're using a company like this is that they they provide services that um, that you just can't do yourself without a whole bunch of extra help. So for instance, if you're doing the reverse of what we do, which we create video first, and then we take the video, make an MP3 file and put it uh, as a podcast. If you're somebody who's just doing an audio podcast, um, this right here, making a YouTube uh, vid video would be important to you. So this will actually, their service will actually generate a video with your album art and then post it to YouTube. So if somebody can listen to your podcast, on YouTube, it's a little bit different, but it's it's the way that some people do this. They don't want to be on video, and we don't mind being on video. But yeah, go take a look at that. Um, they they have a, a bunch of cool options. Um, I'm actually gonna um, I'm actually gonna put in um, our our affiliate link that we have um, for this, just so you can go and take a look at it. And it just it helps me out because we'll be able to pay for the the hosting through it. But that that might be something to take a look at. But there's other companies that are out there, um, like the one I said, um, Blueberry. They've been around for a long, long time. And they're kind of one of the bigger ones in the game, and you should you should take a look at them. But yeah, there's a there's a whole bunch of them that are out there, and um, you know stuff like posting your stuff on SoundCloud or on. We started out using SoundCloud for a little while. Um, they're just they're just not really built for that. I mean, they've added the features onto it because people kind of demanded it, but really, um, they're not they're not made for podcasting. So. No, There's also music. Thing called Anchor. If you've never used Anchor, Anchor has like a thing where you can literally hold up your phone and just record, and then they'll make it into a podcast and push it out there. Those are good and bad too, but might be something for you to take a look at if it's if you're wanting to start off a podcast and kind of get that going. But um, yeah, like I said, I've been doing this stuff for many many years. This stuff has changed throughout the years, and it all started out with an MP3 file and a um, an XML file, an RSS feed that you could. Uh, share and get people to subscribe to it and, and be able to do that. So if you're looking for those sort of, that sort of information, um, you know, th those are the places I would start is looking at something like Acast or Blueberry or, or Libsyn. Uh, Libsyn's another one that's really good too. So I have a, an offer for the WP Blab listener. 
who oh, made yeah. it to 59 minutes. <laughs> if you go to bit.ly slash my content planner, that's camel case and enter in the coupon code WP blab, you will get $5 off of my content planner, which oh. means it'll be $1 and 50 cents just it's for like y'all. Gonna... And if you can, you know, know about this and you've been listening, we appreciate you. So we have this planner. I have this planner that Rhonda designed for me at dogcreatives.com and it's six dollars and fifty cents or whatever price I make it. But if you uh, enter in the coupon code after you add it to the cart, WP Blab, you'll get five dollars off. So how about that? That's Something awesome. special for our listeners who have decided to listen to this for the whole time. And thank you for listening while you're mowing your lawn, driving. Or doing you, you keep doing you, boo. <laughs> awesome, Bridget. That's cool. Thank you very much for doing that. that I that's... just did that with edd.com. I thought, oh, I should do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. Well, live it works. On the I podcast. just did it. It works. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right, folks, I want to say thank you very much for hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to come and hang out with us yet again, we're going to be recording uh, another podcast over at 11 o'clock and uh, come over and hang out with me there. Talk to y'all later. If you're looking at maintenance stuff, that's where we're going to be doing it. See y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.